and welcome to the Centre for Computing History again. Hello. Uh, what are we having a look at today, Phil? Today we've got a computer that most people perhaps wouldn't have seen in the wild. This is an Open University Hector. And this was an early 80s computer. For those of you who don't know the Open University, it's basically a distance learning course. Um, they did a course for systems engineers, basically learning how to program and interface to computers. But back in the 80s, you weren't expected to own a computer necessarily. And if you did, it probably wasn't the type of computer that their course was written for. So much like the BBC with their computer program, they built their own. Let's have a look at it. All right. Plenty of polystyrene in here. So Hold your breath. Have, gonna have a bit of an unboxing here. People love unboxing videos. All right, so first thing we've got here is a whole wedge of documentation. A file unit. Despite the fancy name, it is just a folder. But you get all this wonderful paperwork with it. You've got the manual, of course, experiment books, you've got the entire course notes. Uh, if you wanted to take the course, this would be course code PT502, and you'll sometimes see the computer referred to as PT502 on the web. It says PT502 on the board, so I presume they built it just for this one course. You also get all the spec sheets. So you get the processor spec sheet, the RAM data sheet, basically everything you need to build and repair this computer. Which is good because you'll probably break it when you do the interfacing bit. I was going to say, what I'm looking at here does look rather basic. So, let's get it out. So, it didn't necessarily come in a case. It does have these little uh, rubber feet to stop it scratching up your table. It does have a very nice keyboard. I like this keyboard. Okay, there's something else in the box here. This is the interfacing part of the course. This is the peripheral board and it's got everything you'd need, or at least an example of everything you'd want to connect to a computer. That just plugs onto the expansion port there, such as it is. So if we take a quick look at the computer, keyboard of course is the big one. Uh, it's got an 8085 processor, a kilobyte or so of RAM, a couple of small ROMs which hold a machine code monitor, editor, uh, routines to load and save from tape which goes on this connector over here, some sort of DIN connector which was very popular at the time. Uh, power came in on this side, again a DIN connector. Don't mess the two up. I'm not quite sure if they're different pinouts. Um, video output was either composite if you had a fancy monitor, which we do, or RF if you were connected to your TV at home, which you probably were. Right, so who actually made it? Uh, it's branded Open University. It also says CC Consultants on it. And if you check the um, left manuals that come with it, CC Consultants were presumably a local company who did the board layout and probably the production as well. Everything else is branded Open University, so if you had a problem, it says send it back to the Open University warehouse. Presumably they had an entire distribution system. There are notes in here about if it goes wrong in the first three months, they'll replace it free of charge. After that, you're on your own. So this was a fairly well-supported product, and it was in use for several years. There were three different models. Uh, I think this is the Hector 3, and you can tell that because when you start it up, it supports lowercase. The 1 and 2 didn't. So yeah, should we, uh, should we fire it up? It's got this big old chunky oh, power yeah, supply. I was looking at this. It doesn't look the safest in the world, really, does it? It's only, a, it's only exposed on the low voltage side. Uh, 12 volts at 3 amps, that won't kill you. It'll make you wish it did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so turn it on there. Turn it on. It boots straight into a machine code monitor. Nice little power lamp here so you don't go poking at it while it's, while it's turned on. It boots straight into the machine code monitor. From here you can view and modify memory. You can jump to a location to start running. You can trace through single step. Um, it also has a built-in editor, which you access with the E key. This is not a basic editor for the basic programming language, as many other machines had built in. Uh, this is for assembler code. So you type in move, load, whatever the particular opcodes the 8085 were. Um, you could assemble it in place and run it, and it contained basic support for loading and saving from cassette. So we hit reset to get back into the monitor. This thing does have a self-test feature built in, because I know you don't want to sit here watching me type in pages of assembler code, only for it not to assemble. I really wouldn't. No. So if we type in T, the first test is how much RAM it's got, how many memory cells it could read and write successfully. In this case, 1100, just over a kilobyte of RAM, more than you'd need for a teaching computer. And that's what we expect to see. Hit break, the second test is of the video hardware. Uh, note the lowercase support, which does indicate this is a Hector 3, despite it not saying Hector 3 anywhere on the board. Um, 
The video hardware is actually very simple. It's much closer to a, what they call a glass teletype than any sort of modern memory map display. So no graphics, you poke a character into a, an I.O. port and the hardware just spits it out to the screen. There's some support for scrolling up, down, not up, <laughs> and for clearing the screen. Hit break. The second and third tests are actually of the cassette interface. So we'll skip right past those because we haven't got one of those hooked up. And the final test is the most interesting. It's a test of the peripheral board. So there we go. And if we focus in on the peripheral board itself, it's got this big old edge connector coming over, its own regulator, and a whole host of things to play with. Now the self-test program starts off just running up a counter and outputting it to these four LEDs, which shows the counter is working. If you flip the switches, uh, it detects that. So the first switch. A little motor. It's got a fancy, fancy little fan in it. So this is actually two uh, inputs in one. This disc with the notch has an opto coupler thingy at the bottom, so you can detect that the motor is turning. Uh, the fan itself actually pushes air forward and cools this little thermistor that's hooked up with two incandescent bulbs next to it, which will heat it up. The thermistor itself, you can hook up to an analog to digital converter, so you can find out just how hot it's getting and how much it cools when the fan turns on. If we flip the second... So it's like a little experimental board thing. It is, it's basically yeah. a little computer lab. Second switch. Outputs a continuous tone through the speaker. That does sound like a first loading tone of a spectrum. <laughs> there we go. Our third one. Uh, you notice the LEDs have stopped flickering. That's because it's actually reading uh, this potentiometer through the analog to digital converter. So if we turn that up, we can see it counts up through the binary sequence. And at the same time, this LED over here is being PWM uh, modulated based on the, the values. If we turn it down, it should get brighter and up dimmer. The final button. I have no idea what that one does. What does that one do? We'll come back to that one. And the one labelled heater actually controls the brightness of the bulbs. Fancy stuff. If we hit break again, we're back out. So, that's the self-test program. There is also one other one hidden away in the RAM. You can jump to it and it plays, if we turn the speaker up, uh, it plays a little tune. Let me just find out what address I need to jump to. I did not memorise this. Let's see, focus on the motto. So we jump, or to, rather go, to address 197B. We should hear the classic self-test tune. Isn't that beautiful? So this Hector, would it just been for one particular university course? Or was it used for um, multiple? I've only ever seen it uh, for this particular course, Microprocessors and Product Design, a course for engineers. Uh, the course itself has a whole load of books associated with it. So software design, hardware design, specification of microprocessor-based products. It was almost certainly a year-long course. And at the end of the year, you were expected to give the machine back to the university where it would be used for next year's students. Which is why there's not many out in the wild. Pretty much. Um, they were either destroyed when the course finished, or some students were offered the opportunity to purchase their computer. I'm not sure for how much. So not a lot, you would hope. <laughs> especially given the amount you charge for education. I don't know how much education was back then, but it still pricey. So the obviously, course. being a pretty basic thing, you didn't get any sort of case to keep it safe or... Uh, this particular one doesn't have a case. We do, we have seen other ones with cases, if we just push this to one side. Uh, we've got one over here. This is actually a Hector 2, and you can see that it's, it fits into the case very well. It was clearly designed to have a case. Quite why this one didn't come with one, I'm not sure. So the board is a Hector 2, but the... Um, the case is actually for a 3. This is something of a yeah. Frankenstein model. If you do come across one of these, you open it like that, but be very careful. The plastic hasn't aged well, it's incredibly brittle. You can see someone's put their thumb through there. Much safer, just take the screws out. And you can see the Hector 2 is very similar on the inside, slightly different layout up in the top left here. Um, as far as I know, the expansion interface is exactly the same. There, were, there was a second type of um, peripheral board. It didn't have the fan and the heater. It was basically a digital interface, a couple of switches, LEDs. There was also a plotter board for controlling, well, a plotter. <laughs> And you, you could, and I suppose were expected to design your own at some point. So yeah, that's the uh, 
heck do. This one's actually quite interesting. If you see, these aren't um, proper, not exactly mask ones, but they're not proper ROMs with proper type labels. And the reason for that can be found on the inside of the case. We've got a note that says V8E prototype firmware. So at some point, we'll have to dump these ROMs and compare them to all the others to see what's changed. As far as I know, it works in exactly the same way, but without lowercase support. So yeah, that's the, uh, the Hector. It's a really nice little teaching computer. In a way, the Microbit or the Raspberry Pi of the 80s. And it's, As I say, it's very my, uh, Raspberry Pi-like in some ways, isn't it? It is. It boils computing down to a simple 8-bit processor, a whole bunch of peripherals you can have fun with. Nice little bit of kit. And you can't play Minecraft on it. No. No. Thanks for watching.